Good morning guys and welcome to another episode of The Homecoming with me, James, from the Football Manager WizKids and this is my club, Newcastle United. Before we get into the games that we've recently played since the last update I gave you, I'll show you a few players that have done quite well for me in what has ultimately been a pretty poor season. First up, Jeannie Wijnaldum, the number 5 of Newcastle. 14 caps for Holland. He's on the verge of getting back into the Holland squad after being dropped. He's had a pretty good season, 41 games in total so far. He's played almost every game possible. 7 goals, 12 assists, which I'm pretty happy with. But his role has certainly changed. He's been a box-to-box. -box. He's been a Roman playmaker. He's been a deep-line playmaker. But I just can't get what I seem to want from him. I don't know which role I want him to stick to and play in. A 7.13 average so far. He's done okay. As I say, it's been a very poor season. He's probably been one of the standout players and I'll definitely look to keep him in the future seasons to come. He's a complete more role model, as you can see in his pros up there in his report, which is basically along the lines of a Frank Lampard or Steven Gerrard. You want one of them to tutor your younger players because you don't get that many of the game. And I think Mikel Arteta is one also. As I say, there's not that many in the game, so you look to keep them. It doesn't matter how old they are, if they're experienced or if they're on their way to und the decline, they're good to tutor young players. Jack Callback, the next one, hopefully on the cusp of an England call up. He hasn't done much in terms of the wow factor, but six assists and a 7.36 average is not too bad, I guess, from a ball winning midfielder. He's a solid player, solid Premier League player. Next season, I reckon he won't be my first choice because I'll look to build and make the team better but he's versatile and he can play all over the park so I'm very happy to have Jack Callback as part of my team. Hopefully he gets that England call up that I would like him to see him get. On his return to the club in January from a loan spell at Coventry where he scored quite a few goals, he's not done much but I want to show you Adam Armstrong who I hope to develop into a top striker. He scored two goals, started eight games and one sub appearance. That was due to injuries really which have really just got more Alexander Mitrovic, as you know, was out with a broken leg for six months. He is three weeks away from full training, so he's probably going to get the last game of the season at best. He's been a big miss because he scored some goals when he played. But Adam Armstrong has been involved with that 13 finishing. He could possibly go on to be something a little bit special. and Hopefully one day we can make him an England striker and the main man. Really looking forward to getting... Right into using him next season. He's going to be a big part of what we've got going on at the club. Not just in the game for me and in real life. Got a massive future. Plays like similar to the mould of Michael Owen in my opinion. When he was at his best. Or not his best. When he was coming in to the game and when he was growing up. That's kind of what he reminds me of. Adam Campbell also reminded me the same. But we all know what happened to Adam Campbell. And he now plays at Notts County. No disrespect to them. But I hope for bigger things for him. I'm almost certain Adam Armstrong will go on to be what Adam Campbell I thought would have been. The last player regarding positives we can talk about is Musa Sissoko. Valued at 18 million, an established friend of international, and clubs are flocking around him. I think PSG are going to put in a mammoth bid. And believe me or not, I'm not taking less than 35 to 40 ish million. Otherwise, he's going to stay because he is my best player. 36 games, a great return as the inside forward at 16 goals and 13 assists. That means he's contributed to 29 goals in the 36 games he's played, which absolutely fantastic. Getting six player of the match or man of the match as we know it with a 7.36 average. He's been very poor of late, but so is the team. And he's just got injured for five weeks, which means the season is over. But in terms of a poor season, he's really, really contributed and I'm delighted with what he's gave to the team. Hopefully we can keep him. If not, we're going to get big bucks back for him. OK, in terms of flops of the season, there's quite a few, believe it or not. Ryan Bertrand has not done a great deal since he was signed in January from Southampton. Narsing has done OK at best. Tovan has been very disappointing. Colaccini, for a central defender... He's got 8 goals in 40 games. It's actually not that bad. Been better than what I thought. Because I've actually dropped him of late for Jamal Lasalas. Colacini got a 7.01 average. And I'm surprised by that. I didn't even think it was as good as that. Ruben Neves. Young. 
paid a lot of money for him, but his time will come. Ryan Nyambe, a 6.71 average, but his development has come on leaps and bounds. I'm delighted with that. Alex Mowat, I'm disappointed with him, to be honest. I paid quite a bit of money for him, hoping he'd slot right in, but he just keeps getting injured, and when he gets a game, he doesn't seem to be performing well. Rolando Ahrens, he's not doing much yet, but he's coming into it. Ivan Tony, two goals in 15 sub appearances. Ron Vlar, the sole worst player I've ever used on Football Manager 2015. He's absolutely abysmal. I tried to basically give him away for nothing in January, but nobody wanted him. I want him out of the club, off the wage bill. If we can get money, fantastic. If we can't, just get out of the club. He is awful. George Cooper, a young player, I really just signed for the squad. I don't know what he's going to do. I think I'll loan him out next season. Jordan Ibe, he has done okay, but not as well as suggested. Ayose Perez, I thought he'd get more goals than he did, but he will become world class, there's no doubt about that. I've got my one region, Jamie Straker, I gave him one appearance. He's not the greatest, but he's the only one that had a chance of making anything out of the youth system. There's a lot of players I'm going to try and sell here. Paul Dummett, Gabriel Lobertan, probably Stephen Taylor, Rob Elliott, who leave on a free, Sylvan Marvo, Ron Vlad. I will look to sell them and hopefully build the squad next season. So in the last video, I think we left off at a 4-0 defeat away to Crystal Palace, the Pardew boys. Then we went home, St James's Park, to what was not even close to being a packed house. We beat Stoke, 2-1, but what did you expect? 51,000 plus people, fans to turn up when you're on a bad, abysmal run like that? No, I don't think so. We went to Leicester and in a very entertaining game, it went back and forth. 1-0, 1-1, 2-1, 2-0, 3-2, 3-0 and Leicester scored right to the death to beat me 4-3. Got it about that, but a big win against Southampton. Colocini Armstrong and Jeannie Wijnaldum scoring in that game where the crowd attendance was boosted. A defeat away to Bournemouth, very disappointing at that. We took the lead against Manchester City, 1-0 at half time we were winning, tried to defend it, my mistake, 5-1 defeat, awful. An away draw, Perez scoring again against Sunderland, was disappointed not to hold out. They scored I think about the 70th minute and it fizzled out to a draw at the stadium alight. A 1-0 win against Aston Villa, followed by a 2-2 draw at Anfield, it's a respectable result. But we conceded, I think it was like the 88th minute, James Milner scored against us. It was a cross from the corner and he got to the near post and he beat Chancel and Bemba and slotted in. Disappointing because we were 2-0 up and I really thought we were going to go on and win that game. A good 1-0 away against the other Liverpool side, Everton. Genie went all done penalty. Not much in that game, it was quite scrappy, it wasn't a great game. And we've just come off the back of a defeat against Spurs at home. Disappointing. It's been a very, very poor season. A lot of defeats and draws. The lack of wins, as you can see there, pretty poor. We're against Swansea away next, before playing Chelsea at home. Watford away, who just beat us last week in real life. And we finish up against Norwich at home. Been a poor season all round. I will show you the league table and the competitions and show you how it got on. In case you haven't seen any of the previous episodes and you just happen to come into this one and see what it's all about. As you can see, 34 games played, 11 goal, 11 games, sorry, won, 8 draws, 15 lost, which is very poor, 57 goals conceded, sorry, scored, done quite well in that department I guess, but 69 goals conceded is an absolute shambles, only Bournemouth have conceded more, that tells you the area we need to sort out, really, really disappointing, but I'm really happy with Daryl Jan, Matt, Bertrand, I hope will come into his own, and Bemba's one for the future, as is Las Galas, I think I need a player, probably ballpark, age 25 to 28. Keep Colchini's back up, sell Vlar, sell Taylor. That is poor. 41 points we're on. We're obviously not going to get relegated because Aston Villa are gone, pretty much. I think they are gone. Yep, they're gone. Maybe not. No, they're not gone yet. But they're on their way. Stoke as well, struggling. Crystal Palace, currently in the relegation zone. West Brom, Swansea, Norwich, West Ham are down there too, fighting for their lives. 
Manchester United look like they're going to become champions. Seven points clear, which is fantastic for them, because you probably wouldn't have predicted them to win it. It's a routine top four, though, in my opinion. Manchester United, Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal expected in fifth and sixth is Tottenham and Liverpool overachievers of the season after just being promoted. Definitely Watford. I'm sure Mr. Fox in the box will be happy about that. And Everton and Southampton wrapping up eighth and ninth. So we'll show you the competitions and see how we got on. So you can see the league table on the left there, and as you know, we got knocked out in the fourth round of the FA Cup, known as the Emirates FA Cup. I've changed that in the editor to now be known as just the FA Cup by Swansea in a time that we played them four games in the space of five. And of course, you know, we lost in the Capital One Cup to Swansea also after being 2 0 up in the first leg. We lost 4 0 in the second leg. Fuming. That was my chance to get into Europe or do something really well there. Swansea did go on to the final and lost against Manchester United who of course as you can see look about to wrap up the title only can see 18 goals scoring 72. So we'll have a quick look at the player attributes and stats before we wrap up this episode. The highest average rating in the Premier League is probably the best player in the league, one of my favourite players in the league, Sergio Aguero with a 7.71 average. In terms of goals, Aguero also got 25, Sturridge 19, Rooney 19, Lukaku 18, Bonnie Willifried contributing to Man City and Aguero's goals with 17. Only when Rooney in the top 19 goals for Manchester United who are going on to win the league, so that's a little bit surprising. Assist, Hazard got 13, Firmino and Mata 12, Troy Deeney got a good return, maybe that's why they've done so well, Watford with 11. Diego Costa, he's not an assist man, but got 10 assists there. So that just about wraps up, guys. There's four games left to play in the season. Will I keep my job? Who knows? I hope so, because I really want to continue to save. As I've said before, I don't really like playing the first season, but you need to play it and get it out of the way, of course. And then, the second season is where your team starts to come together. You've probably got rid of all your dead wood, and you can plough on from there. Finally guys, if you like the graphics you can see, the stadiums, the backgrounds, the players, faces, the badges, the kits, the competition logos, the real name fix, etc. Head over to my boys at footballmanagercentral.com and you will get all that there and the guys will help you out. Fantastic guys, sports affiliated, sports interactive affiliated and they've got everything you need. Top guys, head over there, check out the stuff. Thanks for checking out the next episode of The Homecoming and I'll see you again soon. Ta-da.